Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me here today to present some of the work that uh, Agnès Dubois has got uh, in the lab. Agnès started her project asking a, a relatively simple question regarding this uh, beautiful heterogeneity of mouse embryonic stem cells and uh, ended up making what I think are very interesting observations uh, regarding differentiation. So as you all know, uh, mouse ES cells are characterized by their ability to self-renew, but also because they are pluripotent to differentiate into pretty much any cell type. So if it is true that over the last 15 to uh, 20 years, we have learned a lot about the molecular determinants of both uh, self-renewal and differentiation, something that uh, I believe is uh, much less understood is a specific moment during differentiation. And I try to uh, schematize this with this uh, reversed arrow, which signifies that uh, early during differentiation, the cells are uh, still pretty competent to return to an undifferentiated and uh, pluripotent self-renewing state. However, at a given moment here, uh, the cells will become completely unable to uh, reverse back to the pluripotent state. So this is what we refer to as a commitment into differentiation, which can really be seen as this point of no return, after which the cells will uh, either have to unfold a new identity or simply uh, die. So if you uh, go back to the literature to try to get a, a molecular scenario of how commitment may be working, I think we would all agree that uh, one key uh, regulatory element is the loss of activity of uh, the pluripotent signal. And this is going to be mediated mainly through uh, earth signaling, which will end up uh, turning down the expression of uh, these pluripotency uh, transcription factors. However, this uh, decrease in activity of the network is going to be gradual as the expression of these factors decreases. And this uh, provides a window of opportunity during which the activity of the network can uh, probably be reinstated. So this also means that during differentiation, something will need to happen at these genes. And we believe that the acquisition of a repressive environment via histone modification, such as A3K9 trimethylation or DNA methylation, will uh, provide an environment by which uh, the cell will be uh, completely unable to easily reactivate uh, these genes. So this is pretty much uh, the scenario that Agnes uh, uh, is suggesting in her work with uh, some interesting uh, nuances. So something that is uh, of importance is that these transitions here between uh, expression and uh, silencing or downregulation mediated by ERK are already visible in undifferentiated cells. A prominent example is provided by the transcription factor uh, NANOG, which is a uh, highly heterogeneous in uh, mouse ES cells. When NANOG is expressed at high levels, like here, the cells will self-renew very efficiently. And as NANOG expression decreases, the efficiency of self-renewal will decrease and the cells will be more prone for differentiation. However, these cells are not yet committed into differentiation. And in fact, NANOG negative cells can go back to a NANOG expression state. So the work of many uh, different laboratories uh, has shown that these fluctuations of NANOG are uh, mediated or uh, regulated by the pluripotency network itself and by ERK signaling. We have also learned that the NANOG negative state is relatively stable as it is heritable for several cell divisions. So the idea here is that uh, the expression of NANOG can fluctuate uh, through an active and an inactive but reversible state and only during differentiation, nanox silencing will become terminal and hardly uh, reversible. Somehow uh, uh, through a scenario which is quite reminiscent to what I explained regarding a uh, commitment. So Agnes asked a very simple question, which was, uh, can I identify a repressive histone mark that would uh, fulfill sufficient criteria to uh, describe this expression pattern of uh, nanox? And the only mark that she found uh, fulfilling a number of criteria was A3K9 uh, trimethylation, which, as you can see in this chromatin IP assay, is strongly enriched at the nanoc locus in mouse ES cells. And this enrichment is a highly uh, dependent on ERK signaling. When ERK is inhibited, the enrichment of uh, A3K9 trimethylation at nanoc uh, decreases uh, dramatically. Using a nanoc GFP uh, reporter cell line, Agnes could also show 
that the enrichment for nanog expression for uh, H2K9 tramethylation, sorry, is a much more prominent in nanog negative than in nanog positive cells. And perhaps more importantly, she also showed that the enrichment for K9 trimethylation is maintained through uh, mitosis. And this is obviously important to understand how uh, cells convey to the daughters the uh, regulatory input to maintain nanog in a silent state. But what I think is particularly important is that Agnes also showed that during differentiation, in this case, you are looking at mouse embryonic fibroblasts who uh, have silenced nanog during development. The enrichment for K9 trimethylation is very prominent, but very key, this enrichment is not any longer dependent on ERK activity. If you inhibit ERK using the same inhibitor, the same concentration, and the same duration of treatment in mouse embryonic fibroblasts, the enrichment of K9 trimethylation is uh, maintained in contrast to ESLs where it is uh, completely lost. So this uh, suggests a scenario whereby ERK signaling triggers H2K9 trimethylation at NANOG, which is mitotically stable, providing robustness to the system. But by keeping this dependency on ERK, NANOG can reverse back to the expression state. And it is only during differentiation when K9 trimethylation will become independent of ERK that NANOG silencing will become terminal and let's say uh, forever. So to study the role of K9 trimethylation at NANOG, we took advantage of uh, its very particular profile in mouse ES cells. As you can see, K9 trimethylation is not enriched at the promoter. It is not enriched at the minus 5 kb enhancer. So this really gave us the opportunity to delete this region here where K9 trimethylation nucleates, leaving intact the nanog promoter and the nanog enhancer. In these cells, and yes, derived to clones, actually, you can observe that the enrichment for K9 trimethylation is uh, completely abrogated. So what we were hoping to see is that in these cells, uh, nano heterogeneity would be completely abrogated with all cells expressing high levels of nano. What we saw is something a bit more nuanced. Uh, it is true that the expression of nano increases throughout the population, but it is still quite uh, wide. Nevertheless, this increase of nano expression here mechanically depletes the population of cells expressing low or uh, no nano. We were also hoping to see that NANOG would be uh, perhaps unable to be silenced during differentiation. However, what uh, we observed is that uh, during the first 48 hours of differentiation, both wild type and mutant cells display a very similar down regulation of NANOG, and this is most likely due to the loss of activity of the network and uh, the loss of NANOG activators. Nevertheless, as differentiation continues, in wild type cells, nanog expression is farther down related. And this is something that we don't really observe in our mutant cells. So there is a sort of stabilization of nanog expression at low levels, but not as low as they can get in wild type cells. So obviously, with this expression pattern of nanog, our last hope that was that those cells uh, were going to be unable to differentiate, uh, didn't meet. In fact, these cells seem to differentiate uh, relatively uh, efficiently. So, uh, that is it for uh, H2K9 trimethylation. Is this just an additional uh, repressive mark which stabilizes nanox silencing with relatively uh, little impact by itself? And uh, more specifically, uh, uh, what about uh, commitment into differentiation? So to address more specifically this question, Agnes made this assay whereby uh, ES cells are uh, differentiated and every day they are put back in a medium, in an ESL medium containing an inhibitor for ERK. So in these conditions, only those cells that have not yet committed will be able to uh, um, generate um, undifferentiated colonies as shown here in wild type cells. After three days of differentiation, the ability of these cells to self-renew is extremely reduced. In contrast, in our mutant cells, we could see a pretty much higher number of uh, undifferentiated colonies emerging from this differentiated cells. So this can be quantified along the uh, differentiation uh, pathway here. And you can see in wild type cells here in black, most of the cells commit between day two and day three. And uh, in our mutant cells, this period is uh, extremely extended and the efficiency of, of commitment is also uh, much uh, less uh, important. So if the cells cannot commit as efficiently in our mutant than in wild type cells, what are the consequences in terms of unfolding new expression patterns. So to address this, Agnes turned into 
uh, a different differentiation assay making embryonic bodies. And through transcriptomic analysis, she could confirm indeed that uh, the mutant cells differentiate efficiently. You can see that they follow the same trajectory as wild type cells here uh, in black. But as differentiation proceeds, the distance between wild type and mutant cells also uh, increases, indicating that they are severely delayed into differentiation. What was really interesting is that when we uh, perform gene expression signature analysis, particularly late into uh, differentiation, to identify those genes that are uh, differentially expressed between wild type and mutant differentiating cells, one uh, differentiation pathway really emerged very strongly. And this was uh, the primitive number. So for those of you who are familiar with early mouse embryogenesis, this is going to make a lot of sense because the role of Nanog in the embryo is to specify the epiblast versus the primitive endoderm, and it does that through a pathway that involves ERK signaling. So uh, uh, indeed, if uh, we repeat these assays and analyze by uh, qPCR the expression of main drivers of the primitive endoderm, GATA6, GATA4, and SOX17, uh, we can really appreciate that uh, our mutant cells here in red and uh, orange uh, have uh, strong issues to induce these uh, three drivers of the primitive end. So Agnes asked a very simple question. Uh, do my mutants differentiate or not into primitive end? So to address this, she used the protocol uh, established by uh, George Brickman uh, lab, whereby uh, wild IPS cells are readily able to form these uh, uh, endoderm-like uh, clusters. And this is something that we never observed in uh, this mutant that is unable to trigger canine trimethylation at Nano. In fact, if you analyze uh, uh, the expression of uh, key markers of primitive endoderms, such as uh, GATA6 and the uh, PDGF receptor alpha, uh, you can really see that these clusters of cells stain strongly for primitive endoderm markers, GATA6 and the PDGF receptor alpha, and our mutant cells are completely unable to induce the expression of these proteins, and in fact, there is a very substantial maintenance of uh, nano integration. So in conclusion, I would like to, uh, to say that uh, in undifferentiated cells, the heterogeneity of NANOG is at least in part based on uh, mitotically inherited H2K9 trimethylation at NANOG. However, because this methylation here is a strictly dependent on ERK activity, the uh, expression of NANOG is still capable to go back to uh, high levels. In contrast, during differentiation, this enrichment for K9 trimethylation will become truly epigenetic. And by this, I mean that it will lose its dependency to its initial trigger, which in this case is ERK active. And only then the cell will commit because nano can not any longer be re-expressed. The last important part is that the way that the cells commit may have different impacts depending on the differentiation lineage with this uh, K9 trimethylation at nano being apparently quite important for uh, the primitive end of the differentiation. So there are also uh, other interesting aspects in this work, particularly uh, regarding the molecular aspects of K9 trimethylation enrichment, which does not occur at the promoter, does not occur at the enhancer, but in the region in between. And this is something that we are uh, trying to understand now, both in terms of how it is triggered and what the consequences in, in transcriptional terms uh, really are. So I would like to finish by uh, acknowledging uh, again Agnès Dubois, who made uh, most of the work that uh, gave rise to this uh, bioarchive preprint. Uh, she had some help from a master student for some months, Loris. Uh, the RNA-seq was uh, principally analyzed by Almira, and Sandrine and Michelle provided very important help uh, for us to develop new uh, differentiation systems with which we were not uh, completely familiar uh, in the lab. Thank you very much uh, for your attention, and I'd be uh, very happy to reply to your questions. Thank you. Um, thank you, Haribo. Thank you, Haribo. Um, actually, I, 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 I simply wondered the, that this, you know, some insulating effect by this uh, canine trimethylation domain could be the, you know, the really in including the canine trimethylation marks. Um, so, I, so, I, so just uh, you know, it's a sort of you know the genomic chunk which have some insulating activity. The and the the, the canine trimethylation is uh, just you know coincidence. This, this is uh, what I'm I'm asking. 
So I, I, so I, suppose, I, I suppose the question, question is, uh, is uh, largely triggered yeah. by the fact that uh, uh, Nanog enhancers tend to be uh, uh, upstream of uh, Nanog, at least the ones which are really well characterized are upstream, including this uh, minus 5 kb element. So, so in this sense, the enrichment for kinase trimethylation is at a very special position, and uh, you can easily imagine a, a barrier element to an uh, enhancer promoter uh, communication. So, so this is something which is uh, which is uh, entirely possible, uh, not very trivial to test regarding the minus five kb uh, enhancer, which we think is uh, is the most important one because it is really too close. Uh, but it's not something that we can uh, that we can exclude obviously uh, what seems also important and this uh, is is not really an insulating uh, uh, effect i think but uh, is probably part of the, of the answer to the mechanistic part is that uh, canine trimethylation seems to spread uh, from this uh, intervening region uh, exclusively towards the promoter uh, during differentiation or in nano uh, uh, silent cells in, in ear cells already so even if, if if it is not an insulator there is some orientation to the way this uh, this uh, element is working very interesting idea okay so th this is a question from james james brisco uh, the what directs canine trimetration to that region of nano gene do you think the phenotype of the mutant line is a direct consequence of a canine trimetration or could there be another other proteins binding to this region so, so this is really a, a set of questions that deserves a, a second talk uh, but i'll i'll uh, i'll not do that um it uh, it is a uh, uh, very important i think to understand uh, that uh, it is very likely that all this system that we identified here at nanog is uh, possibly working through uh, dna methylation uh, which is maybe what erc is uh, uh, in fine or more directly regulating in in terms of chromatin uh, uh, biology in, in es cells so Agnes uh, uh, made some interesting observations regarding this uh, first using a dna uh, methyl transfer is a uh, triple knockouts uh, that are uh, basically uh, completely uh, uh, empty of, of DNA methylation. And there, the peak of K9 trimethylation is, is not present at Nanog. We know those cells are very homogeneous for Nanog and they have big issues to differentiate. Uh, so, so this uh, uh, really pushed Agnes to look more in detail into uh, why DNA methylation could be uh, doing something at this place specifically. And what she found, and this is what she's uh, uh, trying to. Uh, 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 let's say confirm uh, uh, during these weeks uh, is, is is that a, a zinc finger protein GDFP57, which is a uh, very well known to uh, uh, recruit Cap1, ZDB1, and, and all these systems that methylate K9, uh, does have a motifs in the intervening region, and at least by uh, by a chip PCR, it is uh, it is binding there in a NERC dependent manner as well. So everything seems to fit and go through uh, a pretty canonical ZDFP57 uh, uh, mechanism there. So, so then whether the phenotype is a direct consequence of K9 uh, trimethylation, that's, a, that's a, a question that will probably please Agnes quite a lot uh, because she's been trying to, uh, uh, to link K9 trimethylation at Nanog to uh, more uh, uh, distal consequences regardless of Nanog itself. So we have no proof that this system could be working uh, uh, at all, but it's a, a very interesting idea. The more naive uh, uh, view, which is the one I have, is that this, uh, this element is, uh, is controlling nano expression, uh, particularly to make it very stable during uh, uh, differentiation. So, so I don't know, uh, uh, will, the future will tell probably. Okay, then uh, the next question is uh, from Sari Rower. The, can you exclude a different model in, in which canine trimetration only marks the nano locus in cells? that have already irreversibly committed no i no. cannot I, I i cannot exclude it and in fact uh, 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 i mean the talk was maybe a, a bit oversimplified uh, in the sense that um, so sally knows very well uh, uh, the nano gfp reporter cell line that we that we are using which was made by uh, ian chambers in this cell line the gfp that is uh, driven by nano is also linked to a pyromycin uh, cassette so it is very easy for the experimentalists to uh, uh, grow the cells with pyromycin and obtain a pure population of nano expressing cells and by by rna fish we know that both alleles are actively transcribing in virtually 100 percent of the cells in these conditions we can still see 
uh, uh, K9 trimethylation at Menog. So, so these cells are perfectly undifferentiated, and nevertheless, they are able to trigger K9 uh, trimethylation at Menog. But it is very restricted to the region in between. We don't see any sign of spreading to the promoter in these uh, 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 highly pure Nanog GFP uh, populations. Nevertheless, even, even saying this, uh, I cannot exclude that uh, uh, the role of K9 trimethylation will anyways be a stabilizer uh, coming after a commitment. The only thing we have now is a, a very uh, nice correlation within the uh, temporal frame of uh, 24 hours, which is a, a lot of time in reality. Uh, but uh, uh, when we start from cells that do not have K9 trimethylation, like cells grown in a, in a two eye leaf, and differentiating them, uh, what we observe is that uh, in wild type cells, commitment coincides with the reappearance of K9 trimethylation. So this is the best we can say uh, at the moment, that there is a temporal coincidence between the acquisition of K9 trimethylation when you come from conditions when there isn't K9 trimethylation and the moment where most of the cells commit. The third question is uh, Caramelo Perai. Um, on the same line of James' question, did you check if progressive increase of H3K9 trimethylation upon exit from prepotency is associated to HP1 recruitment? So I need so a uh, number uh, of uh, experiments, uh, 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 chromatin IPs to try to, uh, to chip HP1. We were never really super satisfied by, uh, by uh, our ability to chip this, uh, this protein. But as far as I remember, this is something that you may uh, discuss with Agnes after the after the session because she will stay for the open discussion. Um, but as far as I remember, she only really tried in a, in an undifferentiated cells. So maybe that's a good idea actually to try to see if uh, if uh, we get a, a, a more robust heterochromatinization via HP1 recruitment uh, uh, during differentiation. Thanks for that, Carmelo. Okay. So I would like to conclude uh, this, uh, you know, session. Up, oh, up. Oh, last question. Moment. Um, do you think it uh, for, from from um, Pranov that uh, do you think it's possible that the changes in chromatin architecture during differentiation makes the nanoblockers physically inaccessible to arc? Have you looked at the high C profile? On if, so this touches, so this touches uh, uh, two of the questions that, uh, that I tried to reply the, uh, already. One regarding whether uh, K9 trimethylation at Nanog could be uh, uh, linked to other activities in the genome. And this is something that Agnes has been trying to, uh, to push quite strongly by uh, exploring high C profiles to see if the expression of interactors of, uh, of uh, Nanog locus uh, are affected in a, in a her mutant. And uh, she has a, a very uh, curious observations uh, there. Uh, and this links to uh, uh, Carmelo's question regarding uh, HP1, because one of the ideas we had is that uh, uh, perhaps HP1 recruitment at this region will target the locus to uh, proper uh, heterochromatic compartments uh, during differentiation. So this is something that we, we won't do through a, through a high C analysis, but, uh, but uh, rather by imaging, it should be fairly uh, easy to address. So, so it's something that we have in mind, actually. Thank you very much. So thank, then, you everybody. thank you, everybody.